Okay, before the break, we'll stop at example three. So we have a few more, few more slides, then we uh, conclude chapter eight huh, for this module. So next, we look at creep. Huh? What is creep? Creep is that uh, just now is fatigue. Now we go into creep. So creep is when you have a metal that is under constant load uh, for over a period of time, right? And the time dependent of stream is called creep. So this is a wind turbine. Uh, it's a turbine, engine turbine uh, that is undergo um, a constant load over time. Right? Um, so when you have a rotating uh, object, or design, so normally we will uh, pay attention to a material that give you a low creep rate. Huh? That's your rate, huh? Okay. <clears throat> so what is creep? Creep, you need to use a graph with y-axis is strain, strain versus time. Huh? Again, recall what is tensile graph. Tensile graph is stress versus strain. But it will give you, this graph will give you Hooke's law, stress equal to modulus Young and strain. This is tensile. So just now, static graph, dA, dN. So this is dA over dN. And this is a uh, cycle, uh, sorry, stress K. Okay. Right. Um, and for creep, creep is strain versus time. Again, what is strain? What is strain? Strain is change of deformation or deformation. You can use length or diameter. Strain, you can do use two dimension. One is length, longitudinal deformation, or diameter, lateral deformation. Okay. So here, on the graph here, you have a three region. You have a primary creep, you have sec secondary creep, and uh, tertiary creep. Okay. So what are all these regions? Huh? So the first region is, you can see here, first instantaneous rapid elongation of the Swan's uh, sample. So here, before start, they already have an elongation. At the, it's not flat start from zero. It start from a certain length there. Okay, there's a value before you start time. So it means there is a delta L over L, or delta D over D. But normally we will start with a longitudinal change first. Then they will be have a slow down curve. All right, slow down curve. Um, it decreases with time. And then secondary creep. You see there's a like that form. Um, What we interested is a secondary creep. Secondary creep, we take the slope. We give you the creep rate. Huh? How you calculate the slope, dy, dx. In this case, your y is strain, your x is time. Okay. So in here, your creep resistance is the highest at this stage. And at the middle of second secondary creep is also we call it steady state creep. Huh? Steady state creep. Why? Because this line will almost constant. You can you can uh, see it, there's a trend y equal to mx plus c. There's a linear uh, form there. Okay. And when you have a linear form, in, mat in material science, 
what happened to the internal rearrangement will be there's a high mobile dislocation uh, counteract the strain hardening. So it means there is a there is a counter attack to resist the, the deformation. Okay, then the third one is the last one before it fails. When the creep rate rapidly increased. So there is another form of a curve there. Huh? So first it was slow, like that, then straight line, and then it will curve out like that. So there are three primary region in the uh, uh, creep test huh? or creep graph. Here in your experiment, you see necking. So when there's a titery creep, then you see necking of the sample. You see there's a decrease in the uh, diameter. Lateral deformation happen, right? So here, you can say, if you look at aluminum sample, primary creep, you will see there's a deformation of uh, longitudinal dimension. And then you continue to have longitudinal uh, deformation. Then when you see necking, you will fall into titery creep. Okay. So this is a, a sample that you see. This one is a, on the turbine blade. In the creep deformation, you see turbine blade, you rotate, and then there's a cracking here, right? There's a integral cracking here. A direction of stress will be tense out. You know, when you rotate, it is a force that pulling out, right? It's like you are you are rotating a stone with a line, right? The forces will be uh, pulling the object out. Okay, so the first one on textbook at low temperature below zero point four of your TM. TM is uh, your can say it's a melting point lah, uh, melting point. Um, a low stress. So when you have low temperature, low stress, then you have a primary creep. Uh, but you can ignore the second creep since temperature too low for right. Okay. So if the stress on metal more than the ultimate tensile strength, metal will, will become longer and longer in an ordinary engineering tensile test. So primary creep is what you see on the tensile graph. Clip, huh? So it happen at low temperature, low stress. And this one it will be okay, so this one is on the strain versus time. And as you compare low temperature, medium temperature, and high temperature. Uh, okay. You can see the graph. Huh? So this one also. When you change the time and the temperature is, is below 0 0.4 TM, it's very flat. Then T1, T2, T3, and so on. Okay. So, and you have a low temperature, you have a low stress and low rapture lag time, uh, longer uh, rapture lag time. So, for example, if you pick, uh, sorry. Um, the graph on the right here, we start from a low temperature, 600 something until 900 something. So if you put at one, one point there, um, let's say, let's say you put stress 500 megapascal, right? You, you put a constant load, right? 500 megapascal. You pull to the right, you meet a green line here, uh, maybe 400, lah, more easier to read. 400, green line here, you pull down, it's about less than one, one hour rupture time, lifetime. 400, you pull to the uh, blue color, it will be more than 10 power something. Okay, you have more than 10 power, one, two, three. This is in the log form. Huh? It's a, in the log uh, 
scale. Uh, yeah, so how do you read this one? One, two, three, four. Yeah, this one very, very small here. If you enlarge, you still, you will see nine line here. It means you're able to count one until the next one. Okay. This is another one, another sample for this one is for alloy S590. This one is for let's see, yeah, stress lock. Okay, the scale is a bit different. One is a uh, rapture lifetime hour, this one is one over time, huh? one over time. So the graph will flip. But the behavior you see is, is the same. It's, a, it's the same material. It's only you change the x-axis. OK, um, I think this is more important for your application. At least you know how to do crypt tests. Uh, we don't have this one. Right? Okay. Crypt tests, what is important for crypt tests? Stress and temperature, these two things. Right? Pratic tests is your growth the a over n versus the uh, versus the delta k okay let's watch uh, this one This is a very small sample, huh? very, very small sample, very simple instruments. It can be very complex, but this one is a simplified machine, eh? simplified machine. So how this happened, there's a weight here. So this weight will pull the sample. This is an ice cube to control the temperature. So there's a insulation glass that you put around the sample. You see this, uh, the, the sample here? This is a sample. Fix this arm will transfer the load. See this arm? It will 
transfer the load here. So this load will act on here. This is a pivot point. Okay, I think the rest you watch lah. Basically, you can see how the crypt machine, uh, crypt test can work. So, so crypt curve always trend versus time. In this one is in the unit SI, uh, unit imperial, inch per inch. Strain is dimensionless. Huh? Strain is dimensionless. So, it's just a ratio of uh, deformation. So here you have a delta E versus time here. Uh, this one is for copper alloy. Copper alloy at temperature and constant stress. Right? So what is the trip rate? You take the delta E, the D, the D, dy dx, huh? the, the gradient of the curve. So here you take the value, the change of deformation, you take 0 0.003 minus 0 0.02, and then you take the time. Time, you take 1000 minus 200 hours. So you get the creep rate is in inch over inch over hour. So this is the how you calculate creep rate from the graph. It's quite direct. Huh? Uh, our creep rate is just you calculate the gradient of the graph. This is another one. So stress versus uh, time is a creep. Right? It's a creep. So uh, it's, it's, it's quite direct. Huh? If the question asks you to find the creep rate from the graph, you just pick two points, find dy dx. Same with this one, the rest you read. Huh? Same with this one, stress versus uh, time. affect the slope on the creep curve is recrystallization, oxidation, corrosion, and trace change. All right, this one. Huh? Okay, there's a calculation for, I'll show you all. Huh? Okay, there's a calculation for high temperature creep resistant alloy. This is this this is for high temperature creep resistant. That when you plot uh, stress versus time in a log form and at certain temperature, so this is called LM, uh, less similar parameter. We give you T bracket log TR. TR is your stress rupture time plus C is a constant. C is the constant. So when you convert uh, normally C, we use 20 in a textbook. Okay. So here, um, we are use uh, in here. The one that you see, the first equation here is in Kelvin. You convert Kelvin into Celsius, you plus 273. If you want to put in the Rankine hour in the Fahrenheit, so you plus uh, 470. 470 and so on. Norm normally in your assessment, we will in Celsius. Uh. Okay, so this is the uh, LM graph, parameter graph. You see on the left is stress, on the right, uh, on the bottom is your parameter. Okay, so this one are all the different materials here. Uh, this is a three heated high temperature 
resistance alloy. Huh? If you see F plus four zero means it's uh, in the Rankine formula. The rest of it, huh? okay. So example three will tell you how you apply the graph, this graph. Huh? So the question used, it asks you to use LM parameter plot at stress 207. Determine the time to stress rupture at this temperature for directional solidified alloy 247. So if you're given this graph, you need to you need to determine the time of the stress rupture, means the, the, the sample will destroy, huh? or, uh, become two pieces. So here you use the equation straight away. You use T in Celsius plus 273 log TR plus 20. So stress at 207. And the graph, uh, the question asks you to find alloy for CM247. We did this one. Right, 247. Yeah. Then you move up. On the top is in Celsius. On the bottom is in Fahrenheit. So don't read wrongly. Yeah? On the top is in Celsius. On the below is in Fahrenheit. So you move up, you find a value there. The temperature, the value of LM parameter will be about 27 point something. So you just substitute the value. The LM number you, you extract from graph, 27 point something, 10 power 3. Okay, just be careful on the p-value here. So p-value here is... Uh, if you if you compare the equation on the graph and on the red, red color here, why there is a 10 power 3 there? Because on the graph, there is a 10 power negative 3 on the right-hand side. You pull this one to the left, you get 10 power 3. Understand, huh? This equation, you, you if you read from the graph, graph is... On the right hand side, p equal to something 10 power negative 3. You pull 10 negative 3 to the left, you get 10 power negative positive 3. All right? And then the, the 1, 2, 5, 3 is the temperature. You take 982 plus uh, 273, you get 1, 2, 5, 3. Okay. Then you completing the log calculation. The rupture time will be 10 power 2.03 is in hours. Huh? So it's 107 hours. This is how you find. Huh? Okay, same with this one. So if your assessment, you're given this one, you should be able to solve huh? stress versus the Miller parameter. Huh? Direct. Actually, the formula is on the graph. Uh, you just substitute, find the stress, or you'll be given the parameter, you find the stress of failure or rupture. Okay, example four is the same. So the time to cause 0.2% creep strain in gamma titanium uh, TIAL at a stress of 40 KSI, 1200 Fahrenheit, using the diagram, compare ROC and others. So same. You pull you 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 pull the equation from the graph. Pull equation from the graph. Uh, so here you have the stress 40. It gives you to ask 40. This one is inferior. 40 KSI kilo uh, pound per square inch. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 40 is here. So there's a line here. So 40, you meet this line because the question asks you to find gamma TIAL general. You move down, you get 38. 
And this one is in, you remember uh, this one, you need to pull the 10 power negative three to the left hand side. So your P is 3, 8, 10 power three, 10 power three. So there's a 3, 8, 0, 0, 0. You put in the equation. Okay, you put in the equation, then you calculate the temperature. So temperature is Fahrenheit, you convert to uh, the Celsius. Then you complete the log, you find the rapture time will be 776 hours. Okay. Right, with this, we conclude chapter eight. Eh? It's important how to read the graph. Eh? All the information is there. Eh?